Hello and welcome to Parent Connect. Today we're going to connect with Mrs. Leanne Akey, the gifted education resource teacher for the Mobile County Public School System. Welcome, Ms. Akey. Good Thank morning. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, ma'am. So today we're going to talk about gifted education. Um, so what is gifted education? Number one question. <laughs> Number one question. <laughs> what okay. exactly is it? Well, gifted education is a program that is to meet the needs of students who either have demonstrated or who have the potential to demonstrate uh, academic strengths or creativity strengths and we look for them in all populations, in all um, settings. Anyone can refer a, a student for the gifted program, um, parent, grandparent, even oh. the student, him Himself. or herself can, can <laughs> refer them, you know. And when you say that they're gifted, they're gifted exactly in what areas? Is it something specific? that they show that they're above and beyond, or is it several different criteria? Okay, well, they're, they, according to the state of Alabama, mm -hmm. we follow the guidelines that look for three specific areas. We look for aptitude, which is usually identified through some type of intelligence screener. Mm -hmm. And then we look for gifted characteristics that are displayed in the classroom. Uh, the teacher observes these characteristics and then completes a rating scale based upon that. Then we also gather three pieces of evidence of potential or their strengths. Mm -hmm. So if a student is, you know, very strong in math, then we would look for a performance sample that would showcase those strengths. If they're more um, verbal and that's their strength, then we may find something in that area. We always try to find what is best for the student. Now we do this on a regular basis, so sometimes mm -hmm. we have to look for some additional indicators. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask you. At what point do you guys look for these things in the students? I know a lot of schools have like the second grade screening right. mm -hmm. that the PACE teacher comes in and does different activities with them. Right. Well, what we do is we can um, refer any student as long as they are six years of age and enrolled in a public school. Okay. But what you're talking about in the second grade, mm -hmm. that is our mandatory child fine year. Okay. The gifted specialist assigned to each school goes into the second grade classroom, mm -hmm. spends the entire first semester doing activities and lessons with the students so that those uh, gifted behaviors can come out and be demonstrated. So when you say gifted behaviors, what are some characteristics that um, you that may show see in that a uh -huh. okay, uh, motivation, oh. leadership, mm -hmm. um, insight, communication skills, decision making. And these are the things that she sees while she's in the classroom doing mm -hmm. these activities with well, them. Well, what the gifted specialist sees uh -huh. and what the regular classroom well, teacher sees. sees. As well. okay. And we help them see that gifted characteristics can be manifested in both positive and mm -hmm. then on the flip <laughs> side. You know, so that's, that's what we try to get the teachers to see, that sometimes what they may think is a negative behavior is really a manifestation of a positive characteristic exactly. of gifted. Exactly, strong leadership skills. Right, well, okay. right. Okay. And then once you have identified the student, then what happens? What's the next step? Okay, so once, once we have gone through the second grade child find process, mm -hmm or in a standard referral process, we plug in all the information we've collected mm -hmm. and we want to make sure first that it meets our screening criteria, which is on a matrix of possible 20 points, mm -hmm. that there's at least 13 points gathered from those three areas, okay. aptitude, characteristics, and performance. Mm -hmm. And so if we get at least 13 points, then we can further evaluate them with an individual evaluation that's conducted by a school psychologist or a school psychometrist. Mm -hmm. okay. That takes, it can take a little bit longer for second grade because we are doing so many referrals. Mm -hmm. Through but, all the schools. Right, mm -hmm. but for a standard referral, we have a 90 day timeline, but it rarely takes that long mm -hmm. uh, for that. So once we get the information all plugged in, we look to see if they meet the eligibility criteria, mm -hmm. which is 17 out of possible 20 points. Mm -hmm. 
and then once we have that eligibility meeting and determine I'm eligible, then we invite the parent to come in and we discuss all of the pieces that were used for eligibility and ask the parents to give consent for services. Mm -hmm. If they would like for their child to be in the PACE classes. Right. Okay, once the parent comes in and mm -hmm. signs, yes, this is wonderful. I always knew, you know, little Johnny was super, super right. smart. <laughs> right. Yes, I want him in PACE. Then what happens? PACE will start the following year when they're in third grade. Right. For second grade, mm -hmm. we do start at the beginning of the third grade year for services. Okay. We do pull out services for third, fourth, and fifth graders in the elementary school. Mm -hmm. Third graders receive three hours of direct pull out services. During one day? During one day of okay. the week. Fourth and fifth graders receive four hours of service. Now, when we get to the middle school, we no longer do the pull-out service. We either have direct service where a gifted specialist teaches a content area, mm -hmm. and so they um, teach their class in the same manner that the elementary teacher does in the short amount of time, but they do this each period as the day Every goes on. Every single day they would receive right. the service. Right, and so if we don't have a gifted specialist in, in a key academic area, sometimes they'll just offer gifted electives, more independent study type mm -hmm. activities. We also do indirect services where a gifted student might work with a, excuse me, a gifted specialist might mm -hmm. work with a gifted student who may be having some difficulties academically, socially, behavior. We try to monitor that so that we have another voice for that student. And now, then, when when you talk about um, looking at, because what you all are doing is gifted education, but you're addressing, addressing social, emotional, all these things that make that child gifted. That's right. So when we come back after break, we're going to continue talking with Ms. Aki about the importance of addressing the whole child. Yes, even with gifted education. Thank you. The more parents are involved in school, the more likely it is a child will succeed. Children with involved parents and attend school regularly make better grades and have better social skills. Every involved parent makes a difference. Get involved. Ask about your child's day. Explain how your education matters. Parent involvement, it matters. You can find more information on parent involvement at mcpss.com. as we continue to connect with Mrs. Leanne Aiki and gifted education. We were talking about that whole child, even in gifted education, because we always think about you're gifted, you're smart. And you know, our parents, we want all of our kids yes, to be gifted. Yes, our kids are always the smartest. <laughs> exactly. But you mentioned something that, you know, as a parent, you wouldn't even think, because we're so focused on what our children know, the social emotional aspect. Well, the biggest thing that's hard for teachers to understand is they think, wow, this kid has been identified for gifted, so they are supposed to be great in all exactly. academic Everything. areas. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, and it's not like that. And they behave proper, and they say the right things, and they do the right appropriate things that you would want the child uh -huh. to do. But sometimes that's not the case. You know, we all bring in our own background when we walk in the door. Exactly. So we try to meet the child where they are. Mm -hmm. The gifted specialist, part of their responsibilities, in addition to providing direct services in elementary, is they become a liaison for that child with the gen ed teacher. If they're struggling in an academic area, they communicate with that teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you have kids that are in PACE that also have learning disabilities? We they're do. behind in the reading or math or we do. something else. We do. Oh, and okay. we encourage uh, teachers and um, parents to consider referring students who may have 
one of those disabilities mm -hmm. in another area, mm -hmm. we call it twice exceptional. Mm -hmm. You're wow. both gifted and maybe learning disability. Needing dis help in something right. else. So mm -hmm. our job is to serve the whole child. Exactly. So in the middle school, it becomes very important mm -hmm because they get lost in the shuffle sometimes. Of course. They're not always going to be the best in all of the advanced classes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they need a little extra reinforcement. We also monitor suspensions. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, there are students sometimes that just do not know how to handle their behaviors. Exactly. And so we try to work with them through Thanks a behavior God, analysis and mm -hmm. action plan. Uh, we also work with parents who may need information about uh, applying for magnet schools mm -hmm. or whatever concerns they are. We want the parents to know that we're there for them beyond just the gifted services mm -hmm. that one yeah. day. Extra resources mm -hmm. that you'll get from right. the PACE teacher at right. your school. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what about once they get into high school? We talked about elementary school and middle mm -hmm. school and the service that they, that they get. What about once they're in high school? Okay, when they get to high school, we feel like because there is such a wide variety of pathways that you can exactly. plan yes, your so education, that we encourage those gifted students to consider what they want to do. Do they want to go to college? Do they want to work in a, a field of industry or technology? Mm -hmm. And so we encourage them to follow what their passions are. We consider though that advanced classes, mm -hmm. AP classes, dual enrollment, mm -hmm. even individual um, independent studies are sometimes done as well. We still have a few teachers that teach some gifted electives, mm -hmm. but we just feel like that the students' needs are met so much now with the signature academies and everything that you else can that go each high anywhere. school provides. Mm -hmm. Right. You can and I go think anywhere. it sounds like from what you all do, you actually have tuned in to the interest level and probably even caused them to, you know, internally decide, hey, this is what I'm interested in because you're taking them to a different level through the gifted program. Right. And we try to prepare them in that middle school year. Uh, because we don't have the same type of service in middle school mm -hmm. that they've had in elementary. So mm -hmm. it's a big transition anyway. You're going from one teacher to many exactly. teachers. So our teach goal classes. is to prepare them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, and we've heard another term that's synonymous with gifted PACE. So what does PACE stand for? Okay. PACE is the Mobile County program that is designed for gifted students. It was authorized in 1982, although, wow. gifted, program, yeah. <laughs> although gifted program in, in Mobile County has been around. Uh, my predecessor, Regina Smith, worked mm -hmm. with a group of teachers and they named the program PACE, which stands for Pursuing Academics, Creativity, Excellence. Okay. I like that. Okay. I do too. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of our way of talking about all of the program. It's not just academics. Exactly. We do identify students through the creativity uh, method of identification where we look at creative strengths mm -hmm. and that's a little different from academics. And then of course we all want them to achieve excellence in exactly. everything. Exactly, exactly. So when you talk about the PACE program and elementary level, one question I have, because as parents, we all think that our children uh -huh. are yes, the brightest. Yes, my child should be yeah. right. They should know be. it all. And right. when, you, when you get a phone call, because I do know parents start that entrance level probably three years, four years of age. What's the earliest that a parent has called you with? Hey, my child is gifted. Uh -huh. We it's, want them tested. It's funny you should say that <laughs> because the second day of school, I received a phone call from a parent of a kindergarten student oh, wow. who had been in a very special preschool program <laughs> and she was already bored on the second day of school. I have had parents call about their child that has been in the three, four, and five year range. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm never surprised. I always try to go to the school, meet the parent, mm -hmm. and talk with the gifted specialist and the parent and the administration about how we can best meet that child's needs. Because we have to be, uh, the child has to be six years old exactly. before we can do, mm -hmm. start any type of referral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So we're really looking for that good age where they have had some school experience. Mm -hmm. But we do try to meet their needs. You know, parents will say they're reading. <laughs> they're reading books way above their age. And that's know? great and wonderful. That's right. <laughs> Being gifted is something else. It is. What about the parents? Do you, I'm sure you get a lot of phone calls about parents that say, hey, my child didn't qualify or I just knew they were going to and they didn't. So what's the next step that parent would take okay. if they still felt their child should be in pace? Sometimes we have um, some students who maybe might not meet all the specific areas mm -hmm. that are involved in the eligibility process. Personally, when I was in the classroom as a gifted teacher, I wanted to see what I could do to help look for those gifted strengths. Mm -hmm. So a parent can always ask us to take another look, but we want to encourage the parent to give the child a little bit of time. Maybe it's a maturity level exactly. that's just not quite there yet. So preferably wait about a year before That's really requesting. what we try to do. If there's been a complete psychological, psychoeducational evaluation, mm -hmm. we do want to wait a year to give them some time. Maybe it is that maturity level. Sometimes the kids are not identified in second grade from the child fund, mm -hmm. but they are later identified in fourth grade. So, so then um, they can qualify. Right. So when we come back, we're going to continue to talk with Mrs. Aki about um, parents, dealing with parents, because we all want the best for our children. Thank you. All in together now, we can make it better now. Come on. Moving a little and eating better every day can help make you and your child healthier. Search We Can to find out more. Parent Connect, Conexión a Padres. Si necesita ayuda en otro idioma aparte en inglés, por favor llame al 251-221-5184. Parent Connect. Mantente conectado. Gracias. The class of 2015 earned over $97 million in scholarships. And the class of 2016 is already on its way. Graduating students who are college and career ready. It starts with us. Welcome back. Today we are connecting with Ms. Leanne Aki, the Gifted Education Resource Teacher for the Mobile County Public School System. And today we are discussing gifted education in the Mobile County Public School System. What does it look like? How do you get there? And what happens once you are there? So this is my next okay. question. So my child has been in the gifted program, elementary school, middle, middle school, school. Mm -hmm. and we're leaving middle school going to high school. And we talked earlier about in high school, they are prepared for the many pathways that we now have in our high school. So once I decide a pathway, well, my child decides a pathway, but I'm so happy because I've always, well, he's in the gifted program. What <laughs> happens? Is it, can I still say he's in the gifted program? He's in high school? Absolutely. We never ungift a student. <laughs> uh -huh. Just because you left elementary school and you go to middle school or middle school to high school, mm -hmm. It's kind of like once gifted, always gifted. Like now, sometimes that. you may not be manifesting your potential <laughs> in, the, in the best way. That's a different you story. Know, <laughs> that, that happens, but we try to encourage um, teachers to remember that they do have special needs and they have rights in their education just like you would for any other student with an area of disability. Exactly. exactly. What about for children who leave the public school, leave Mobile County, and then come back? Are they still considered um, in PACE and in the gifted program? They are, and, okay. and that happens and a lot through our state. We have students go from one district to another district, mm -hmm. and so we have a reciprocity. You know, if you're gifted in Madison County, you're gifted in Mobile and County. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. that's the only thing that we have to do sometimes is just get the parents to come in and sign a new permission for placement because we're now in a new um, LEA District. setting. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, if parents uh, are bringing in a student from outside of Alabama, we do have to look at the information that was used to identify them for gifted services okay. in that state uh -huh. and see what we need to still gather uh -huh. for Alabama. Okay. 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 And then once your student, your child is in PACE, what do they do in PACE? PACE sounds all wonderful and it's for gifted students and whatnot. But once they actually leave the regular classroom, what is it that they're doing? What, what, what is it? 
Well, let's just say it's a lot of fun. Oh. <laughs> you are actually working on similar type topics. You know, mm -hmm. we're not we're not just abandoning the math and the reading and the social studies and science that you're doing it, but we're doing it at another level, exactly. a deeper level. We in elementary school have a three-year cycling curriculum mm -hmm. where the first year we have a focus of more of world history. Mm -hmm. And so you can go in any kind of area that you want, ancient Greek, ancient Rome, ancient China, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of different things there. And then we have a STEM curriculum mm -hmm. that we use for every year that has a focus where we, this year we're looking at problem solving with shapes, mm -hmm. where we're looking at how geometry is used in different careers. Mm -hmm. And then, so we have the humanities focus, which go back to the world history, covers all those areas. Mm -hmm. So like we may be studying folklore or uh, fairy tales from different countries, mm -hmm. you know, understanding mm -hmm. the culture. And then we also have the affective part of our curriculum. This year it's service learning. So all of the teachers are working with their students mm -hmm. to devise a service learning project that their school can be involved in. And it's integrated. It integrated is. Integrated and they are still our part of the school. Absolutely. And actually you're bringing out some of those leadership skills, those characteristics that help place them in the That's PACE program. That's our goal. We want, to, we want to help the student to understand who they are as mm -hmm. a gifted student wow. and how they fit into the scheme of mm -hmm. things. I love it. And that is for elementary school. Right. And then what about for middle school? What do they do? Okay, so in middle school it depends on the school mm -hmm. and the certification of the gifted specialist. And so are they if doing... they are certified in language arts, mm -hmm. then they teach an advanced language arts class. Oh, okay. And the gifted students take that class with the gifted specialist. And then do they still do the service projects and things like that? They can. Um, it's hard and challenging for that middle school teacher to mm -hmm. find that extra mm -hmm. time. Sometimes it's, it's easier if you're not teaching a content subject where you can teach the electives That's true, or you can be involved in, mm -hmm. in more of those things. Mm -hmm. Wow, so I, there is a difference from the elementary to the middle and I can actually see the segue into mm -hmm. high school because they've had those different opportunities and then you all have actually went in and, and I can just see some of the students whom I've taught before who I, you know, that are in the gifted realm, how mm -hmm. it helps take them to the next level. So then when they do get to high school, so when they're leaving eighth grade, do you all do some type of conference, I guess, or you work with them as to deciding that pathway and even with the parent to say, hey, this is what we've seen, this is what's going to best benefit your child. Mm -hmm. We do, it's a lot of involving the counselor at that mm -hmm. point, mm -hmm. but we want to encourage the student to look at the opportunities that are available for them, mm -hmm. because a lot of kids will just go to their neighborhood school that they're zoned for. Exactly. And so we want to encourage their participation in all of the Signature Academy options to look at those to see what to would see best which fit one, mm -hmm. Yes, would them. be best for them. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially because in the gifted, gifted children have different type interests. It might not be your local school. Exactly. So it is right. nice to know that, hey, you can go someplace else right. um, mm -hmm. to develop even further those skills that they have, those interests. Exactly. And especially based on the integrated curriculum that the gifted program does have. Have you seen where there are students who possibly, um, if it wasn't for the gifted program, that maybe they would have, and I don't want to say fallen by the wayside, but gifted actually, you were able to see them progress to a different level, just because different it's, it's challenging. Yeah, I, I yeah. can, and, and I think of right now a young man that a gifted specialist at a middle school just took him under her wings she protected him in so many ways because sometimes his behavior would manifest itself mm -hmm. that was confusing to other people. You know, they didn't see his gifts, they saw the behaviors. Just the and so she, she took him and made sure that he had care that he needed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he needed a place to sleep. She made sure that that was taken care of. She met with his mom mm -hmm. in her home and he ended up leaving our system 
and um, his mom did pass away. She had some health conditions. He went on to graduate from high school. He's That's now great. back here as a student at the University of South Alabama, and one of the first things he did was to reconnect with his teacher from middle school and the difference that mm -hmm. she exactly. made in his life. Parents, that's what it's about, the difference that we can make in our children's lives. So when we come back, we want to be able to give you all some information because as we know, we all have that thought that our yes. children are gifted. They're so we smart. want to <laughs> let you know how to make that contact. Thank you. Sweetheart, can I give you a hand? No thanks, Dad. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates and have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. Welcome back, parents. As we finish up our conversation with Ms. Leanne Akey, the gifted education resource teacher for the Mobile County Public School System, tell us the most important thing. What's the process? If I feel like my child is gifted, uh, I know first he or she needs to be six years of age to make that referral. So what's next? Six years of age and enrolled in a public school. Okay. We have a lot of private school parents that want oh. their children evaluated. And we but only you evaluate, you have that. to be enrolled in our system. Okay. So the process is very simple. Contact the gifted specialists assigned to your school. Mm -hmm. Some of them are itinerant teachers, so they have services in their base school mm -hmm. where the kids may be bused to that school, but they will come and visit the school that does not have a teacher that's based on their campus. Mm -hmm. So let your first let your classroom teacher know. They will know how to get in touch with the gifted specialist. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you will receive some information that gives permission for the evaluation. You'll receive a brochure about what to do what to, to follow expect. the processes, mm -hmm. what to expect, and then from there we just go forward with the referral. However, if you have trouble reaching them, you can always reach me. Yes. What is your phone number? My number is 221-4228. 221-4228. Yes. Ms. Aki, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Thank, thank you. you. That's great information. And most importantly, I just appreciate the passion. Um, our students are so lucky here in Mobile County to have you and your team members. Thank and you we so appreciate much. everything. Thank yes, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Parents, thank you. I'm sure you all enjoyed the session today and you have received some great information. Thank you. Parent Connect. See you again real soon. Bye.